You're watching Good Morning Sun Coast at 5. Crisis on the Sun Coast will show you how volunteers are helping clean up the remains of red tide in Manatee County. Plus, an IRS alert for you this morning. Check the amount that you're withholding on your paycheck. We're going to tell you why. And if you're looking for a job, we'll tell you how your social media posts could be a huge factor whether you get hired. Good morning, Sunco starts right now. Good morning, everybody. It is Thursday now, August 23rd. I'm Ray Collins. And I'm Stephanie Webb. Thanks for waking up on uh, waking up with us. Well not said. On us on this <laughs> Thursday morning. Nice. We should probably have John Scalzi save us right about now. Well, you know what? I think we're going to have a little bit of rain shower activity around this morning. You know what? I think everybody's getting really tired of this whole red tide. I think everybody's getting sick of the smell of the rotting fish and that general westerly wind will continue again today and bring that smell into inland areas. But the good news is that as we head into the weekend, we're going to get a little bit of a wind reversal. So perhaps that'll help out a little bit. So fingers crossed on that one. We've got showers on radar this morning. In fact, they're, they're numerous out here in Gulf waters and some of them sinking closer to us. If you're traveling northward into Pinellas County, there's been some fairly heavy rainfall on and off there throughout the nighttime. We haven't had a whole lot over our area yet, but certainly that possibility exists. About a 20% chance of rainfall today and temperatures are generally up near 80. Back to you. Thank you, John. A couple issues already. Uh, let's click on uh, State Road 64 also known as West Manatee Avenue, and find out more about an accident at 42nd Street, uh, just west of downtown. Be aware of that. Doesn't show any residual backup so far today. Also, look at that 301 northbound, early congestion as you get past State Road 70. Checking farther south now, here's the northern half of Sarasota County. Nothing to report so far. And then checking farther south, here's the southern half of Sarasota County. All good at 502 on your Thursday morning. Well, the red tide outbreak continues to be a big issue here on the Sun Coast. Governor Rick Scott's even declared a state of emergency to help fund the cleanup and more research. Yesterday was the first of a series of efforts at Pomasola Causeway in Manatee County. Today, volunteers will head out to another spot, Perico Preserve on Manatee Avenue West. And that's where we find our Marla Spence with a preview of the story. Marla? Hey guys, good morning. Um, cleanup efforts are underway in a little bit in a few hours, but as you can imagine, uh, areas similar to the Palmasola Causeway as well as Perigo Preserve have been feeling the effects of red tide with dead marine animals as well as marine debris. Now, just yesterday, about 50 volunteers made it their business to get out and clean up the shoreline of the Palmasola Bay. That cleanup was the first out of two cleanups in Manatee County. Now, today's effort will be the second cleanup this week. Today the Manatee County Parks and Natural Resources Department hopes they get the same response as they did yesterday. We spoke to one volunteer yesterday as well and who did not mind getting up early for the sake of helping the environment. All of the red tide impacts all of our marine life and I am more than happy to give my time to help keep our beaches clean and uh, make it safer for our animals. Now, volunteers as well as those with Manatee County will be right here at Perico Preserve starting at 730 this morning. They are asked, which is the volunteers, to bring their rakes or pitchforks, but things like gloves, masks, and gloves and buckets will be provided on site as soon as 730 this morning. Reporting live in Manatee County, I'm Marla Spence for ABC7, your Suncoast News. Thank you, Marla. Two area state lawmakers are holding a red tide town hall this weekend in Sarasota. Representatives Margaret Good and Joe Gruders having a session Saturday from 3 to 4.30 to hear concerns about red tides being held at the Suncoast Technical College's Conference Center on Beneva Road. In the meantime, lifeguards are the latest to feel the effects of that red tide, physically in their case. Currently, not all lifeguard towers are open due to the lack of people on the beaches, so many are actually rotating shifts to help cut down on the respiratory effects that they're feeling because of all that red tide. They're all now having to use masks while out on duty. Before we had the masks uh, coming out here, what you're doing is, is you feel nauseous after breathing these fumes all day and you're coughing and coughing and you have a splitting headache from coughing, so people were calling in more for sure because they weren't feeling well. Now on the worst days, lifeguards are patrolling the beaches in trucks with the windows rolled up and the air conditioning on. Another dead dolphin has been found in Sarasota County, now bringing the total of 14 dead dolphins in the past 16 days. 
Venice Marine Patrol says it was found by the CETO subcontractors about a mile offshore. And uh, Moat Marine also recovered two dead sea turtles about an hour north off Anna Maria Island. Well, 87, of course, has been in front of the red tide outbreak and covering the story from every angle, from the causes to tourism effects to cleanup. Now, for answers to some of your most asked questions, all you have to do is head online to mysuncoast.com. On to other news now. A developing story from Hawaii where a Category 4 hurricane is heading toward the islands. NASA got this close-up view of the eye of the hurricane. As the storm moved through the Pacific yesterday, sustained winds are already hitting 155 miles per hour. Well, unable to really evacuate other than heading inland, people that live on the islands are getting ready to ride out the storm, stocking up and cleaning out grocery stores. With bottled water now flying off store, well, store shelves in Hawaii, people are going directly to the water bottlers themselves to buy all those storm supplies. Two of their main water companies in Hawaii are actually selling directly to com companies and customers right outside their warehouses. There's some reasonable limit that we want them to abide by. Um, we don't want people to hoard water unnecessarily, and we want to try and spread the inventory for as many people as possible. We've uh, seen a definite influx in uh, walk-in traffic, uh, customers that are, or people that are coming in who aren't regular customers just coming in to pick up water and get, get their rations and supplies. Now that Category 4 storm could hit the island later on today with winds around 145 miles per hour or more. If that's the case, it would be the most powerful storm to hit Hawaii since Hurricane Iniki back in 1992. Ohio State has suspended Coach Urban Meyer for the first three games of the upcoming football season. The Board of Trustees also suspended the Athletic Director Gene Smith, also three games, no pay. They decided the men didn't do enough to report domestic violence complaints involving assistant coach Zach Smith. Meyer held a press, con press conference last night to explain his side. Followed my heart, not my head. I fell short in pursuing full information because at each juncture, I gave Zach Smith the benefit of the doubt. But this has been a learning experience. Um, I'm a different person now than I was back in 2009, 2012. Uh, my awareness of domestic violence and how serious whenever you hear that kind of accusation, absolutely I've, I've grown, but I've grown over the years. And uh, I will be very cautious. Meyer can return to the team after the first game, but can't be on the sidelines until the fourth game. He, of course, was the former coach of the Florida Gators. Well, next year's tax deadline is still a long way off, but the IRS wants you to check your weekly withholding amount now. Why? Well, a new government report found that 21% of taxpayers will under withhold their taxes this year, meaning next year you'll have to pay up. The IRS recommends checking your withholding amount now while you still have time to change it, especially if you've had big life changes like getting married or having a baby. Yeah, especially because this is so new and it's such a big change, it could be a surprise for you sometime between January 15th and in April 15th and that's what the IRS really doesn't want to happen. They don't want people to be surprised. Now, if you want to figure out how much you could possibly owe the IRS next year or how much you should be withholding, they do have a calculator online that can help. Microsoft doing more to prevent election meddling. The technology giant unveiled what's calling Defending Democracy program. Microsoft will offer a free added layer of security to political candidates and other organizations. That service called Account Guard will send out notifications when attacks are detected and help organizations take down or take action rather to lock down accounts. And finally, some good news this morning for a shelter cat that we first introduced you to yesterday. Now meet Bruno. He became a big sensation because of his, you know, large bone size and ability to stand on his haunches at a whopping 25 pounds. Well, a Chicago area shelter said that applications to adopt Bruno came in from all over the world, but he has been adopted and Bruno's new parents are actually right from Chicago. So how did they top everyone else and score the cat? Well, a little creativity. They sent in a song called Gimme That Fat Cat. It was actually <laughs> written by a member of the Second City Comedy Theater Troupe is based in Chicago, who is a friend of Bruno's new owners. Now the new family said they love him just the way he is, but they might put him on a little kitty treadmill just to try and keep him a little bit healthier. <laughs> treadmill, maybe a gluten-free diet. <laughs> maybe a gluten-free diet and pull back on the snacks a little bit. Still ahead on Good Morning Sun Coast, many of us spend hours on our phones, no names. Me, me, me. me. Rhymes with WEF. <laughs>
But what is it doing to our eyesight? We'll share a new report that, and also hear from an eye doctor as well. And later in the hour, a controversial billboard, this one right here, has gone up in New Jersey. Is it promoting a new documentary or simply a slam on President Trump? Well, we'll have the backstory, but first. 510 right now on this Thursday morning. Nice shot outside our studios, looking out at Lemon and 10th, just, uh, just, just north of downtown. How's the forecast today, John? Well, if you point that camera to the northeast, you might just see a few pops of lightning out there. We have some thunderstorm activity moving closer to Pinellas County, and we have about a 40% chance of storm by around 12 noon. That's why I've checked the rain box on the drive time forecast. The best chance of rainfall, I think, for commuters will probably be this morning with a few scattered showers around. But then by afternoon, I think most everything moves inland, so the drive time tonight should be pretty quiet. We'll talk about the forecast coming up in a few. Me, pick me, me, me. Oh, come on, man. <laughs> Oh man, I love technology. Hey, yo, check out my new phone. Look at this right here. For years, the DeSoto Club has needed improvements. Join me and Boys and Girls Club of Manatee County as we raise money to build a brand new facility. It will be bigger and better, just like it was 40 years ago when I attended. Invest in kids, build great futures. According to Golf Digest, two of the nation's top golf resorts are on the Robert Trent Jones Golf Trail, the Albert Opelika Marriott at Grand National, and the Renaissance Ross Bridge Golf Resort and Spa in Birmingham. Plus, the Marriott at Grand National was recognized as Hotel of the Year by Marriott International. Experience luxury and world-class golf Southern style. Visit RTJ Golf slash resorts or call 800-949-4444 to book your trip to the trail. Don't hide it. We know that sometimes emotions just get the better of you, especially at the Honda Summer Spectacular event. And we know getting a deal on the Honda Civic, a 2018 KBB.com Best Buy, can be quite liberating, especially when this stylish Honda Civic comes with sport mode. Yes! Yes! Express what you're feeling at the Honda Summer Spectacular event. I'm happy you're happy. Visit your local Honda dealer and test drive the Honda Civic today. The day you lose your strength is the day you lose your independence. Muscle is lost with age, affecting your energy, balance, and mobility. Before you know it, you're depending on others just to get through the day. But you can reverse and prevent muscle loss. Introducing MyoHealth, a revolutionary proven approach to increased muscle strength and function in as little as 30 days. Live life on your terms with more energy and confidence. After a serious health issue put me down, Mile Health's getting me back up again. I'm doing activities that I haven't done for a long time. It really works. Mile Health is a safe, natural dietary supplement, the result of decades of research and 24 human clinical studies. You can live stronger at any age with greater strength, mobility, balance, and energy. Call or go online now and take the MyoHealth 30 Day Strength Challenge. Coast Guard, we are taking on water. The United States Coast Guard. They secure our ports and waterways, protect our environment, keep drugs away from our kids, and save lives. It's dangerous work. And in times of triumph or tragedy, the Coast Guard Foundation answers the call to support Coast Guard members and their families. Learn more at CoastGuardFoundation.org. C7 first alert weather forecast with meteorologist John Scalzi. 78 degrees already out there this morning. We've had a general westerly wind throughout the night in the last hour. We've had a more of a southwesterly wind flow. Um, I think a lot of that, or southeasterly rather, a lot of that is due to the proximity of showers and thunderstorms getting closer. There's a little bit of er erratic wind uh, over the course of the next mm, couple of hours, I think, as these showers and thunderstorms move on shore. Uh, generally speaking, though, the flow across the state is westerly, coming in off Gulf waters, and that's bringing that 
that smell of the effects of red tide right across the region. So 20% chance of rain showers through the morning hours. I think as we get closer to noon with a little heating, we'll max out our rain chances along the coast at about 40%. Then everything starts to shift into inland areas. We'll start reducing our rain chance by three and we'll probably around seven o'clock tonight not see much in the way of rainfall across the region. So the west wind continues to produce these cells that have a drift as they're very visible across the area moving from west to east. You also notice this kind of ribbon of showers right here. That's a good indication of the frontal boundary sinking southward. Yeah, we have a cold front in the forecast, but it's not going to be moving through our area. It's going to be stuck in North Florida, still getting pretty close to us for this time of year. That frontal boundary helping to kind of funnel this moisture right across the region. We've got some pretty good thunderstorm activity across Pinellas County right now. That one area of cells is in fact a thunderstorm. The southwesterly wind flow continues throughout the day today, taking these showers, bringing them across the region. The thing is that as we get a little bit of daytime heating and we start to encourage the sea breeze building, the sea breeze will just reinforce this southwesterly wind flow and these showers will focus over on the other coast as we head into the afternoon during a time of generally maximum shower and thunderstorm development during the heat of the day. So that'll be over on the east coast, not our coast necessarily. The frontal boundary itself, as I mentioned, just kind of stalls out across central Florida till it eventually just washes away. Tomorrow it starts to wash away and we start to switch our winds around. Tomorrow is going to be kind of a uh, transition day, we'll call it, as we develop a more westerly wind flow in the opposite direction of today's wind, taking those showers and thunderstorms, which today develop mostly along the other coast and shift them back in our direction. However, for Tomorrow, some slightly drier air may work its way in temporarily, briefly, reducing rain chances just a little bit. West wind today throughout the day coming in at about 10 knots. Of course, boaters will have to deal with the red tide near the shore. We're looking at uh, about a 40% chance of rainfall today. Tomorrow, that little bit of drier air reducing rain chance to about 30%. Then over the course of the weekend, a 50% chance of showers. And then the winds turn to the east over the weekend. That means late day showers and thunderstorms, which drift back to the coast. And next week, we'll watch that east wind continue. Hopefully, that'll help a little bit with the red tide situation. Back to you guys. All right, thanks so much, John. Let's take a look outside and check out how your morning commute is so far. We do have one spot to tell you about right there in Manatee County. State Road 64, Manatee Avenue. There's an accident right there at 42nd Street. So that's going on right now in Manatee County. In the top half of Sarasota County, those roads are not looking too bad just yet. Running pretty smooth so far this hour. If you're heading a little bit farther south into the county, 75 and 41. Not running too bad yet just this hour. If we can scooch that along. There we go. That is also looking uh, pretty quiet at this hour. It is 518 and that is your first alert traffic. Well, whether you want to believe it or not, what you post on social media could determine whether or not you get your dream job. A new survey finds that employers really do check what you're posting online before they hire you. Mary Maloney explains. What's on your Facebook, Twitter and Instagram? Your prospective employer wants to know. According to a new career builder survey, 70% of employers use social networking sites to research job candidates. So be careful what you post. The survey reveals that 57% of employers who look at social media said they found content that caused them not to hire candidates. Here are some of the top social media mistakes that cost people jobs. Number one on that list, posting provocative or inappropriate photos, videos, or information. Number two, posting about drinking or using drugs. Three, posting discriminatory comments about race, gender, or religion. Four, links to criminal behavior. Five, lying about your qualifications. Another important tip, don't have a screen name that's unprofessional. The results were based on a national survey of 1,000 hiring managers and HR professionals. According to CareerBuilder, you shouldn't expect the social media monitoring to stop once you're hired. Nearly half of all employers say they use social networking sites to research current employees. For Consumer Watch, I'm Mary Maloney. Spending hours looking at your cell phone is hurting your eyesight. That's the conclusion of a new report from the University of Toledo. 
The report found that blue light emitted from digital devices can transform molecules in the retina and speed up the onset of macular degeneration, leading cause of blindness. An eye doctor in Texas says he sees a lot of patients now with symptoms from their devices through the day. Used to what we call computer vision syndrome, dry eye, eye fatigue, eye strain, headaches, um, and all of that is pretty prevalent in our young adults. Dr. West says he has seen an increase in needing glasses due to too much time on phones. I don't know what that is. All I about. don't know, right? Yeah. I mean, I don't know what he's even talking about over there. Right? What are you looking at? Okay, what an addiction. <laughs> Five twenty on your Thursday morning. It's still to come on Good Morning Sun Coast. I love this. We're going to tell you how a New York public library is taking classic novels, then translating them into animated Instagram stories. Wait to see this. It's coming up in Tech Bites. And next half hour, a developing story out in the Pacific: Hurricane Lane, a strong Category Four storm, barreling around the islands. Details coming up on Good Morning Sun Coast. Stay connected to your clients and new customers using ABC7 Digital Media Services. Our team of professionals provide a wide array of digital services to help you get the most out of your website. We specialize in building and helping you maintain the most effective digital solutions for your business. It's vital that your online presence stands out, so our experts will equip you with the best resources available. Trust ABC7 Digital Media Services to give you the right tools to grow your business. Are you a soccer mom or dad? Regardless of their age or experience level, when your kids play soccer or any other sport, there's one person on the sideline who is key to help recognize and seek medical care for sports-related concussion. It's you. You need to know the signs and symptoms of concussion, and you need to act if you think your child has been injured. Remember, when in doubt, sit them out. To learn more, go to cbc.gov concussion. 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, 1,004. This is the story of a boy who was very sensitive to lights and sounds. So he built secret hiding places where nothing could get in. The boy didn't like looking people in the eye. It made him feel uncomfortable. One day, he found out he had something called autism. His family got him help. And slowly, he learned how to live with it better. Early intervention can make a lifetime of difference. Learn the signs at autismspeaks.org. We believe in patriotism. We believe in our nation's youth. We believe veterans earn their benefits through their service to our nation. We believe in a strong national security. We believe in our country. For 100 years, veterans have been impacting our nation through the American Legion, and we believe it makes a difference. If you believe, learn more at legion.org slash we believe. Pets bring so much joy to our lives. They're loyal, they're protective, and smart. Yet as smart as our pets might be, they can't advocate for themselves, especially in the event of a natural disaster. During Hurricane Harvey, many families were separated from their pets. That's why it's important your pet is part of your family's disaster preparedness plan. Talk to your veterinarian and visit banfieldfoundation.org disaster. Don't save it for a rainy day. I witnessed him have two heart attacks in ICU. He went through seizures. We'd much rather have Aaron like this than dead. A lot of parents don't have that luxury. He can't talk. He can't walk. This is a condition Aaron will live with for the rest of his life because he abused prescription pills. Mind your meds. Learn more from the Partnership for Drug-Free Kids. So just how much time is your teen spending on their phone? Well, even they would probably admit it's too much. The story in today's Tech Bites. In today's Tech Bites, Verizon admitting it slowed down wireless data speeds of a Northern California Fire Department as that department was responding to a wildfire. Verizon says the department had exceeded its data limits. The company now acknowledges the slowdown was a mistake. It insists the decision had nothing to do with the rollback of net neutrality rules that govern internet service speeds. The Santa Clara Fire Chief said as the slower service had a significant impact on their response. Apparently, even teens think they get too much screen time. A new study found 54% admit they spend too much time on their phones. 45% say they check their phones as soon as they wake up. 
And the New York Public Library is bringing classic novels to its Instagram page. Yeah, the library is posting entire novels on its Instagram stories. The first novel, Alice Adventures in Wonderland. Those are your Tech Bites. Have a great day. Tech Bites. Sponsored by Carfax.com. so frustrating. I just want to find a used car without getting ripped off. You could start your search at the all-new Carfax.com. That might help. Show me the Carfax. Now the car you want and the history you need are easy to find. Show me used trucks with one owner. Pretty cool. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> Show me the Carfax. Start your used car search and get free Carfax reports at the all-new Carfax.com. You wouldn't accept an incomplete job from anyone else. Why accept it from an allergy pill? Flonase relieves sneezing, itchy, watery eyes, and a runny nose, plus nasal congestion, which most pills don't. It's more complete allergy relief. Flonase. Back to school at Burlington, there's so much to choose from for so little money. They have racks and racks of school clothes, lunch boxes, a gazillion backpacks, hats, sneakers. All the great brands at a fraction of the cost. Mom saved a ton at Burlington. Our nation's servicemen and women show great courage and leadership both on and off the battlefield. When they transition to civilian life, they can apply the skills and values they learned in the military to the workplace. That's why the Coalition to Salute America's Heroes is urging employers everywhere to be smart, bet on a vet. Hiring a veteran is also a great way to show your appreciation for them. To learn more, call 1-888-44-SALUTE. Here's something we bet you didn't know. Nearly half of all cancers can be prevented. That's right, half, nearly 50%, mostly by making small everyday changes in your diet and controlling your weight, walking more, eating less, and eating foods that help you and your family to seriously reduce the risk of cancer. And of course, by not smoking. Visit the Cancer Prevention Together We Can website and get a free 30-day planner filled with tips, recipes, stats, and more about protecting your family. Go to prevent50.org. My sons growing up without me inspired me to quit smoking. I talked to my doctors and then I threw away all my cigarettes, ashtrays, and lighters. I started exercising instead of smoking. Letting my friends online know I was quitting kept me on track. Staying away from alcohol when I was first quitting was key. I kept on trying, learned something each time. Do whatever it takes. No matter how many times it takes. We did it. You can too. For free help, visit cdc.gov tips. Who else has been taking your prescriptions? Keep your medicine and your family safe and secure. Mind your meds. To learn how we can help, visit the Partnership for Drug-Free Kids at drugfree.org. When it comes to drinking, what do you think moderation is? The U.S. Dietary Guidelines define moderation as up to one drink a day for women and up to two drinks a day for men. So what's a drink? The guidelines say a drink equals 12 ounces of beer, 5 ounces of wine, or a cocktail with 1.5 ounces of distilled spirits. Each contains the same amount of alcohol. Like to learn more? Visit drinkinmoderation.org. Hi, I'm Janelle Hale, founder and CEO of the National Breast Cancer Foundation. No one should face breast cancer alone. When I was diagnosed 36 years ago, there was no internet, and I had to make a decision with little information. Early detection saved my life. It could save yours too. To learn what every woman needs to know about breast cancer, visit nbcf.org hope. 
You're watching Good Morning Sun Coast at 5.30. Hurricane Lane, now a strong Category 4 storm, is heading toward the Hawaiian Islands. We'll tell you how people there are preparing to feel the effects there this morning. The Sun Coast receiving state funding to fight the effects of red tide. So why is Manatee receiving more than Sarasota? And 70 years later, one veteran is finally getting his high school diploma. We'll tell you the story of just why it was so important that he finished school after all these years. Those stories and your Thursday forecast right now on Good Morning Sun Coast. And good morning to you. It is 5.30 on this Thursday morning. I'm Stephanie Webb. I'm Ray Collins. Half past 5, 23rd day of August. John Scalzi is tracking the forecast for us. Good morning, John. 23rd day of August, but little Friday. Yeah, all right, and hopefully by the weekend the winds are going to shift a little bit more out of the uh, out of the east and that'll help take some of this smell and kind of maybe throw it back toward Gulf waters. So we're looking at a few scattered showers across the region now moving through Pinellas County. We don't have anything over our area quite yet, but there's certainly a good chance of seeing some showers, particularly along the coast of Manatee County. Uh, we did have some shower, do have some showers, I should say, down to the south of us in Lee County, but so far we're looking pretty good across our region, though our rain chance will continue to rise through the morning hours till around lunchtime today. Uh, Temperatures are generally speaking warm and muggy most everywhere. Even in inland areas, we're looking at mid 70s, but high dew point values along the coastline close to the 80 mark. And as we progress through the day, watch rain chances maxing out by noon at about 40% and then most everything moves inland. Complete forecast in a sec. All right, checking first alert traffic now. An issue ongoing on Manatee Avenue West at 42nd Street. Be aware of that. Not sure which direction that's in, but it doesn't look like any other traffic is being uh, slowed down because of it. You will see some ongoing congestion, though, on 301 northbound after you get past State Road 70. A little blip there on Fruitville Road eastbound as you approach uh, on Ray right there by the Target Plaza. And then checking our final map to the south. We'll look at that and find out uh, really not much to speak of at this point of the day, 531 right now. Well, it is no secret to Hawaii now where Hurricane Lane is heading toward the islands with the storm effects now being called life threatening. Hurricane warnings are now posted for the state's most populated areas, including Honolulu. ABC's Kenneth Gibson has the latest. This morning, the Hawaiian Islands are bracing for the worst. I would be very, very happy to be able to say, well, it was another near miss. But that doesn't seem likely with the trajectory that's coming now. Hurricane Lane barreling through the Pacific with winds approaching 150 miles an hour, making it one of the most powerful hurricanes to ever get this close to the island. We're very scared, <laughs> but um, we're, we're just going to make the most of it. The massive hurricane seen here from space, prompting hurricane warnings for the big island, Maui, and now Oahu. We got to take it very, very seriously. And we're all working together at this point to make sure that we plan for the worst and hope for the best. The U.S. Navy moving ships and submarines as state officials prepare for evacuations. All public schools in the state are closed today and tomorrow to prepare buildings as evacuation centers. Lane could produce 20-foot waves and dump up to 20 inches of rain. Forecasters are closely watching the storm's dangerous center and how close it gets to the islands over the next 24 hours. As we head into Friday, at 2 p.m., that's when it tracks just south of Maui County. Red indicates those hurricane force winds. They could come on shore. And as people prepare, water at this Walmart in Honolulu sold out. Gas stations running out of fuel. Hurricane hunters flying into the eye of the storm, tracking its intensity. There's no other way for the forecasters to see what exactly is inside the storm and what's going on until we get there. Kendis Gibson, ABC News, New York. Back in Florida, the state is giving out $6 million to help counties fight the effects of red tide. The State Department of Environmental Protection gave Manatee $750,000 and Sarasota $100,000. Funding depends on what projects their respective counties come up with in their applications. Manatee County spokesman says the money is needed. At some point, we have to have a conversation whether this is a persistent issue over you know, how much we're able to spend. I don't know that there's going to be an, uh, an empty uh, pot of money or a blank check from the state indefinitely. Both Sarasota and Manatee County officials say if there is a need for more funding, they're confident the state will continue to help. 
So just how much are the seabirds on the coast being affected by all that red tide? Well, the team at Save Our Seabirds tells us that six laughing gulls are suffering the effects of red tide. They've been brought to their shelter in just the past two weeks. Now, experts say that red tide affects birds the way that they think and walk since it's a neurotoxin. So basically it affects their neurological system and they're unable to stand and walk. So it looks like they have broken legs or they're unable to keep their head up, but it's just basically the, the toxins not allowing them to move properly. Now, laughing gulls are the only birds here on the Sun Coast that have been affected so far, but Lee Wither says that brown and white pelicans will head back here in December, so they are hoping that the red tide clears up by then. Red tide is costing waterfront restaurants countless dollars. The general manager of Pops Sunset Grill in Nakoma says revenue there has dropped substantially as the smell from red tide keeps customers away from the coast. Complaints of coughing and, you know, tightness in their chest and some scratchiness. Um, I think everybody has it, but more or less it's the smell that just discourages everybody. And, you know, you can look at the water. It's totally brown. It's not the normal teal color that it traditionally is around here for us. And he says the usual lunch crowd has been cut in half since red tide hit the area three weeks ago. Well, three million more dollars is headed our way for red tide cleanup, this time coming from the State Department of Environmental Protection. Now, the department is providing an additional money and grant money to help with all of that cleanup. Manatee County is going to receive about $750,000 from the DEP. Sarasota County will get almost $100,000. Now, we spoke to state officials who say that funding is distributed based on requests, and Manatee County requested more money for cleanup than Sarasota County. Over the past three weeks, Manatee County has cleaned up nearly 160 tons of dead sea life due to red tide, much of it from Anna Maria Island. The county is using machines, volunteers, and even inmates on work release to help clean the beaches each week. Last week, Holmes Beach City officials put dumpsters at various access points. Other issues involved canals on the bay side. The county also began a red tide hotline where residents can report fish kills. And of course, ABC7 has been out in front of the season's red tide crisis, covering the story from all different angles, from the causes to tourism effects to cleanup costs. Just head online to mysuncoast.com to get the answers to some of your most asked questions. Up north, a billboard is causing some double takes in New Jersey. A documentary and uh, activist spent a thousand dollars of his own money to put up this billboard in Union Township. It's critical of President Trump. Neil Harrison says it's more of a political message than an ad for his next film. He made reference to this week's legal issues involving Paul Manafort and Michael Cohen. Manafort uh, was convicted. Cohen's given up uh, everything he can, and we're hoping that Trump is next. And basically, that's what we're out here for. Um, I'm an activist, and that's what I do, and we're trying to drum up some, uh, some real, uh, real support here. Harrison says he put the sign up in New Jersey because New York does not allow political billboards. Well, if you're feeling generous today and you don't want to donate money to a nonprofit or church, uh, how about President Trump's former lawyer? Well, CNN's Jenny Most, Jeannie Most, looks at Michael Cohen's GoFundMe campaign as only Jeannie Most can. Feeling generous, Michael Cohen would like you to donate to his GoFundMe page? And I was like, are you knocking futz? I couldn't believe it. They were believe Cohen's lawyer was all over TV asking for donations. He's without resources. Wanting to help Donald, to help Michael Cohen tell the truth. And we've set up a website called Michael Cohen Truth Fund. Are you kidding me, read one tweet? How about you get a go you account? No, 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 I won't give him a dime. Not one dime, not one dime. Not even a dime that I found off the street. But someone's donating towards the goal of half a million dollars. A woman who contributed five bucks using Melania's name says she did it to see if the site was legit. On Megyn Kelly's show, the audience laughed out loud. Some help from the American people so we can continue to tell the truth. The, the audience is not, they don't know if you're ready to donate. <laughs> I'm thinking they're all dirty, and I'm thinking they all been grabbing the money, and now they just want to grab mine. Some wondered why Cohen needs cash when he bought a $6.7 million apartment that he now rents out for $25,000 a month. Read another tweet, 
Here's who he really is, linking to audio of Cohen threatening a reporter. So I'm warning you, tread very lightly, because what I'm going to do to you is going to be disgusting. Do you understand me? We understand some of those willing to contribute want Cohen to bring down President Trump. The enemy of my enemy is my friend, so... How much would you be willing to give him? I think 20 bucks would be the most, because um, I... I think like I give like $30 to World Wildlife Fund, so I can't give more to Cohen than I give to pandas. Cohen, like pandas, may end up in captivity. Who would you rather contribute to? Jeannie Mo, CNN, New York. 70 years ago, an East Texas man had to drop out of school when he was 12 years old to go to work for his family. Now he's getting a chance to walk the stage and receive his high school diploma. Yeah, one of these stories. Two weeks into the seventh grade, Johnny Speak, real name, was forced to drop out and start working. Six years later, he was called off to the Korean War. His daughter-in-law says his lack of diploma always bothered him. He always felt, you know, embarrassed to have to fill out a job application and put, you know, no, I didn't graduate high school, or what was your last grade completed? Johnny was asked to walk the stage at his former school in Lubbock. He says he's not sure yet if he's going to do it. We'll keep you posted. I hope he does. Good story. It's never too late. Still ahead, a live report from Manatee County, and we'll show you what is being done to remove the effects of red tide along the shoreline. But first, let's take a look outside and check out the Sun Coast this morning. Nice shot of downtown Sarasota. What is the uh, the forecast for Little Friday, John Scalzi? Yeah, so we'll see a few scattered showers move across the coastline during the morning hours and into around noontime. Then those showers tend to build in inland areas later in the afternoon, leaving the coast a little drier. Uh, we have the latest red tide reports from Moat Marine, and again, we have Lido Key showing up with intense amounts of red tide. Siesta Key down to moderate amount, and Holmes and Coquina, Nokomis and Venice all having moderate amounts of the irritant in the air, causing some respiratory irritation there. Winds will keep to the west this afternoon, and that, of course, not good news for inland residents as well, who will get that smell from the decaying fish. Complete forecast coming up in a few. Planning a carnival fantasy cruise out of Mobile? Then check out the park and cruise packages at the luxurious Battle House and Renaissance Riverview Plaza hotels. Stay at the Battle House for $169 per night or the Riverview Plaza for just $149 per night and leave your car for the duration of your cruise. Includes transportation to and from the cruise terminal. If you're cruising out of Mobile, come stay with us. Call 1-800-MARRIOTT or visit Marriott.com now. This is your brain. This is drugs. This is your brain on drugs. Any questions? Um, yeah, I have questions. Prescription drugs aren't as bad as street drugs, right? Weed's legal, isn't it? Drinking is worse than smoking weed. Isn't it? Why is, is heroin, heroin so, so addictive? Molly just makes you feel happy. I have questions. Mom? Dad, did you ever try drugs? They're going to ask. Be ready. Go to drugfree.org. A message from Partnership for Drug-Free Kids. Today, everyone is looking for more fashionable choices in flooring than ever before. And G. Freed has responded with a huge selection of carpets, tile, wood, laminate, and vinyl. Installed by a highly skilled team, G. Freed has got everything you're looking for and more. The next time you think about quality flooring, think G. Freed Flooring America. G. Freed Flooring America. Our world is at your feet. I'm Deshauna Barber. In 2016, I was proud to win the title of Miss USA. What makes me just as proud is my service in the US military. In the service, a soldier gains skills and learns values like discipline and leadership. That makes them an asset to any business that hires them. If you're an employer on behalf of Coalition to Salute America's Heroes, remember to hire smart and bet on a vet. Visit saluteheroes.org or call this number to learn more. I am the resident district manager on the FAU campus for Chartwell. Whenever I see Haley, I do not see a person with a disability. I see a person with extraordinary abilities. Haley is always smiling. She's always on time. She gives fantastic customer service and is always focused on any job that she's given. Hi, this is Dan Marino. When your business recruits people with disabilities, everybody wins. To find out how, go to abilitieswork.com. 
EmployFlorida.com. A promise was made, a promise that hit the beaches of Normandy, a vow that captured Iwo Jima, a contract that weathered Tet, a pledge that stormed the desert in Iraq, an IOU that braved IEDs in Kandahar. A promise was made to America's veterans. DAV fights to keep that promise, so all veterans and their families get the benefits and support they earned. For help, visit DAV.org. Now your ABC7 First Alert weather forecast with meteorologist John Scalzi. So this morning we look at an air temperature coming in at 78 degrees with the dew point value at 77. That's a really high dew point value. And we can thank what has generally been a westerly wind that has continued for the last 12, 15 hours. In the last hour, we've seen a more easterly wind flow, but that's not going to last. It's going to turn back to the west and be with us throughout the afternoon and into the evening hours, west wind. We have a heat index of 81 degrees already at this hour of the morning, and we have a mix of kind of clouds and clear sky out there right now. Uh, by 7 a.m., we'll look at 76 degrees with about a 20% chance of showers near the coastline mostly. I don't think we'll have much in inland areas. And then as we head into lunchtime, that rain chance probably doubles, going up to about 40%. At that point, sometime between 11, 12, 1, 2 o'clock, we'll start to see a maximum of rain shower chance near the coastline. And then as we head into the later afternoon, most of that chance moves into inland areas. So we'll start to decrease rain chances a bit by 3 p.m. to about 30 percent and take it down even further as we head into the evening hours when most of those rains move into inland locations. The forecast kind of shaping up like this for today. Exactly what Pinellas County is seeing right now. That is some scattered showers and even a thunderstorm or two moving into that area. We have across our region some pretty good coverage across the Skyway Bridge, light to moderate rain. Roads will be slippery there as you're, if you're heading across that bridge in the next half hour or so. Uh, Bradenton may be seeing a light little bit of drizzle or some light rain around that region. And Anna Maria Island, while dry now in about a half an hour, may get just brushed by that shower out in the Gulf. It's not going to produce a lot of heavy rainfall, but it certainly could produce some light, slippery road surfaces. We have a southwesterly wind flow generally throughout the state of Florida today. Now, I say generally because it could shift a little bit from time to time, depending on where the showers are located. As we're seeing right now, we've developed a little local easterly wind. Um, but in, in, for the most part, in general, the, the motion of the storms across the region are going to be coming at you from the Gulf, and they're going to be moving into inland areas, and they're going to be, going to be becoming more numerous and heavy along the east coast compared to our coast. A frontal boundary located just to the north tries to sink south, doesn't have far to go before it stalls out, and that continues with our southwesterly flow through today. Now tomorrow, we're gonna catch a little bit of a wind reversal as that trough lifts out, high pressure builds back in, and we start to see our winds coming in out of the east. So east moving thunderstorms today, oh, the extra W on thunderstorms. Uh, winds shifting tomorrow, and we have good rain chances into the weekend, probably doubling our rain chance of today. The future cast shows these scattered showers along the coast developing by 8, 9 o'clock. And then moving into inland areas, Hardy, DeSoto County, Highlands County, as we head into the evening hours, leaving the coast pretty quiet and clear during that time period. This is the amount of moisture aloft, and it's a good indication of where the weather might be occurring because, of course, the drier the air, the less the rain chance. Just to the north of that stalled frontal boundary that I showed you, there is some drier air. And as we head through time, we'll watch that drier air kind of sink a little bit further to the south. Then humidity begin to return as we head into uh, Sunday particularly. So on Friday, we'll probably reduce the rain chances just a little bit. Tropics look quiet. Not much going on here, at least in our basin. That's good news. But as we head into uh, the afternoon, the same will not be true in the Pacific Basin, where, of course, Lane will start to make its brush with the Hawaiian Island chain. The big problem there is going to be rainfall. I think it could produce as much as 20 inches of rain. West wind coming in at about 10 knots today. We'll watch a seven day forecast that features 40% chance of rain today, 30% tomorrow. And then as we head into the weekend, we'll up those rain chances once again to 50 or 60%. But the nature of those showers changes. We'll have showers inland in the afternoon, then moving back toward the coast as opposed to our coastal rains that occur first today and then move inland later in the afternoon. 
Uh, over the course of the next work week, I think that same sort of easterly wind pattern will continue. Back to you guys. All right, thank you so much, John. Let's take a look outside and check your first alert traffic once again. We are still following this one thing right here in Manatee County. We want to tell you about State Road 64 Manatee Avenue. There's an accident right there at 42nd Street. So if that's part of your morning commute, give yourself a few extra minutes to navigate around that. In Sarasota County, those roads are still looking pretty good at this hour. We do have one spot to tell you about right there on 75 a bit of a construction area. There's some debris on the road at exit 205, which is a Clark Road, of course. So again, I-75 in the northbound lane. There's some debris on the road at exit 205, which is Clark Road. Then if you're headed farther south into the area, 75 and 41 are looking pretty decent so far at this hour. It is 550 and that's your first alert traffic. Well, the red tide outbreak shows no signs of slowing down. Governor Rick Scott has now declared a state of emergency to help fund the cleanup and more research. Yesterday, volunteers helped clean up the area around the Palmasola Causeway in Manatee County today. They're at nearby Perico Preserve along State Road 64 as well. And so, too, is our Marla Spence with a preview of today's event. Marla? Yeah, guys, it's another day of cleanup efforts here in Manatee County. The County Parks and Natural Resources Department tells us they need help cleaning up areas that are not beaches, but are still impacted by red tide and the toxic algae bloom. Now, just yesterday, close to 50 volunteers made it their business to get out and clean up the shoreline of the Palmasola Bay. That cleanup was the first out of two in Manatee County, and today's effort at Perico Preserve will be the second this week. The Manatee County Parks and Natural Resources Department tells us if you plan to volunteer here today. Safety is top priority. County workers will be handing out buckets, gloves and masks, and they're also asking volunteers to bring their own rakes. One thing they're stressing to volunteers is to not pick up any fish or debris with their hands. And that, you know, we want people to know that it, it's not just something you can necessarily go out and do, but there are lots of groups that are working to help clean up. If you look along the beach, you'll see everything from tiny little sardines and anchovies to like, really giant snook and, and other marine life. And we know that that's horrible, but one of the things we don't often realize is other animals are coming in now and eating that. Melissa Nell with the Manatee County Parks and Natural Resources Department tells us that causes an impact to the food chain because animals like raccoons and birds end up getting sick after eating dead fish that is killed by red tide. Now volunteers are being asked to be here by 730 this morning. That's when that cleanup will start this morning and they're asked, like I said, to bring rakes and also pitchforks for today's cleanup efforts. Reporting live in Manatee County, I'm Marla Spence for ABC 7, your Suncoast News. The group Aerosmith wants President Trump to stop using their song at his pep rallies. <clears throat> Singer Steven Tyler's attorney sent a cease and desist letter one day after the president used Aerosmith's Living on the Edge song at his rally. The letter accused the president of falsely implying that Tyler endorses the president. This is not the first time that Trump and Tyler have feuded over their music. Tyler's attorney says two previous cease and desist letters were sent back in 2015 while the president was seeking the nomination in uh, 2015. Oh, they're living on the edge. You know, I've covered a lot of uh, rallies. I know that is funny. Okay, thanks. I do a lot of your jokes. I was quoting lyrics right there. That is wonderful. As we go to the break, I'll tell you that in a number of Trump rallies, they'll play Rolling Stones songs. That's true. That's and a similar true. thing has happened there as well. Yeah, that's true. 553, the day's top news headlines after this. Stay with us. You now have the power to prioritize your Facebook feed and get local news and information from the team you trust. Go to the ABC7 Sarasota page on Facebook. Give us a like. Then click following and choose see first. That's it. Customize even more by choosing notifications. Choose breaking news, posts, live videos, anything you want to see in real time. Take control of your news feed and stay connected to what's happening in your community with ABC7 on Facebook. There was this big bruise on my friend's face. I didn't want to see it. I didn't want to think her own nephew could have hit her. I didn't want to see it. My mother's bank account was emptied and a caregiver had taken control of it. I didn't want to see it. My father's refrigerator, there was hardly anything in it. That's unusual for him. It's tough to see that a senior citizen is being abused, physically, emotionally, sexually, or financially. Elder abuse is a crime. So see the signs, stop the crimes. My name is Julius. I have cerebral palsy. I work for Farmer Jaffe Weising Law Firm. I do a lot of data entry and scanning documents. I want to increase my working experience to make the company 
much better. At the end of the day, it's good to think of the day's work and to think about what I have accomplished. Hi, this is Dan Marino. When your business recruits people with disabilities, everybody wins. To find out how, go to abilitieswork.employflorida.com. We've all heard how military veterans adjusting to the civilian world may have certain issues. 30. 70. If only everyone had this issue. No matter what challenge they face, Easter Seals is here for America's veterans. That is a pretty good breakfast you're not even eating. Not hungry. No? Why not? What's up? Kath and I knew that Jenny had been partying a bit. Found out she tried heroin. Most people don't know what to say about drugs, but we do. Visit us at drugfree.org. My name is Luke Perry, and I am one million strong. I'm in the fight against colorectal cancer because I believe we can win it. Colon and rectal cancers are the second leading cause of cancer deaths among men and women in the U.S. Colon cancer is preventable. Know the risk factors and make sure to get screened. There are simple take-home options available. Take control of your health. Screening for colon cancer isn't embarrassing. It can be life-saving. To find out more about your options, visit fightcrc.org. Uh, sh short on time, our three headlines involved Red Tide. Red Tide. And Coach Urban Meyer's reaction to his suspension. Those stories and much more next hour right here on Good Morning Suncoast.